Let's talk about car body movement in a corner today and its effect on aerodynamics. When a car is driving through a corner, there are different movements a body can do. It can yaw, pitch and roll. All of these movements have some influence on aerodynamics. So let's have a look at a 180 degree turn. There are different ways to drive through this corner and we look at the so-called classic line first. At the classic line, we brake in a straight line. Once the braking is finished, we release the brake and drive with almost constant speed and a certain steering angle through the corner with the largest possible radius. Why largest possible radius? If we look at the formula for side force, we can see that more mass and more velocity are increasing the side force, but a larger radius is reducing it. Less side force means we reach the tire limit later and can go faster. After we finish steering, we accelerate in a straight line. Now let's have a closer look at how the car body moves during these three stages. Let's say this car has a splitter, front diffuser, rear diffuser and rear wing. During straight line braking, our car is pitching forward. The front gets closer to the street, the rear further away. The angle of attack for the rear wing increases and it produces more downforce. For aggressive wings, the flow can now start to separate because the car is pitching too much and the flow cannot follow the suction side of the wing. But we also have to be careful at the front of the car. The splitter is getting very close to the ground and there is a high risk of choking the underbody flow. What do I mean by that? It means that the small gap between street and splitter does not allow enough air underneath the car. The flow is further weakened while flowing downstream and by the time it reaches the rear diffuser, it cannot follow the diffuser shape and separates. Also, if the rear wing flow separates and does not support the diffuser anymore, the diffuser flow can separate. So you could lose a lot of rear downforce under braking which makes the car tricky to drive and the driver loses confidence under braking. To avoid this, race cars usually have a cutback or race section in the middle of the splitter. In the next stage, we have a constant steering angle and speed. The car is rolling to one side. The rear wing is producing downforce, but because of its angled position, it now has a side force component. That means it's counteracting the body side force and we can de-stress the tires for higher cornering speed. The more extreme the angle of the rear wing is, the more side force it produces. Some cars use that effect for higher cornering speeds. In the acceleration zone, the car stopped rolling and pitches to the back. Also in this situation, there's a risk to choke the rear diffuser. The car can get very close to the ground and not enough high energy air can reach the diffuser. Additionally, because we are at the very back of the car, some boundary layer developed at the underbody and if this touches the ground, you basically shut the door for clean air to the back. So also in this situation, you can lose lots of rear downforce. Because the whole body is at an angle, the rear wing is backed off and the splitter might even produce lift. That was the classic line, but we could stress the car a bit more and go faster through the corner. That is the advanced line. Like at the classic line, we brake on the straight. But the difference here is that we start steering before we are finished with braking. So stage two is steering and braking until the middle of the corner. We carry a lot more speed into the corner. The steering angle is constantly increasing and not fixed like at the classic line. As soon as we are in the middle, we accelerate again and gently open the steering. Once we are finished with steering, we accelerate in a straight line again. Let's have a closer look at the body movement here. Straight line braking is the same as the classic line. But when we start steering under braking, the car is pitching and rolling at the same time. And that brings our front diffuser very close to the ground. Again. This can choke the front diffuser and the result is less downforce for the outboard front wheel. This in return means less grip and understeer. One example, 
The team set the car up with soft anti-roll bars for more mechanical grip at the front axle. That works in slow corners, but in medium and high speed turns the car understeers because it's rolling too much and the front diffuser cannot work properly. In that case, it would make sense to install stiffer anti-roll bars to avoid understeer, although it goes against common sense. In the next stage, we accelerate and steer at the same time, which brings the outboard rear corner close to the ground. Problem here is that the inner tire squared vortex is getting closer to the diffuser and it disturbs the diffuser flow. Hence, it generates less downforce. You can play with different strake options to reduce this effect. In F1, teams use the arrow-shaped rear suspension members to control the flow in these cornering situations. After we finish steering, we accelerate in a straight line again. In summary, we can say that from an arrow point of view, it's best if there is as little body movement as possible. You want a stable, reliable arrow platform so the car is performing well and is predictable. Often a setup for mechanical grip is the opposite to a setup for downforce, and it's up to the team to decide what's best for each track. Let me know if you like this explanation and what other topics you are interested in.